Hippie Gourmet in Amsterdam? How perfect is that? Welcome to Amsterdam. Talk about alternative mode of transportation. Canals running every which way through this city. You can actually see 15 bridges from this overpass right here. This was the oldest planned port in all of Europe. It now is a bustling center of trade for a global economy. And it's been just exploding ever since. Water taxis, pedal boats, you name it. You will see it on these canals. If it floats, it's here in one of these canals. This place is amazing. When in Amsterdam, de Kasch is the place to eat. Take some planning, a reservation is required, but it's a dream place to eat and where it's every chef's dream to work and prepare food right here where it's grown, next to the restaurant. You can actually go out and visit the greenhouse and see the vegetables growing. Let's go see the greenhouse. into the garden. Proper foot attire is always needed. Keeps the feet clean and they float. Here at Dikash, we were lucky enough to stumble across the owner, Ketjen Hakeman, and he's, go. he's gonna tell you a little bit about it. Easier to pronounce, names would be better, <laughs> but uh, it's a very, very classy, fantastic experience when you can eat and witness the vegetables growing right outside. Welcome, you're in the Kas in Amsterdam. My name is Gertjan Hageman. It's not easy for you, you can forget it. This is restaurant de Kas. We grow all our own vegetables and herbs. We do it for an international audience. If you want to know the story, we're going to tell you it in short. I always worked as a cook. I got my Michelin star in 1993 here in Amsterdam. That's kind of Olympic medal for a chef. All to make you very happy but it didn't make me happy. I started to get very grumpy and gray, according to my wife. And she uh, told me, well, listen, I'm going to make uh, the money. You stop working and you think about your future. And it was a splendid idea. And then uh, at the small garden of a good friend of mine, I was just struck by the idea. I think you call it an epiphany. I was struck by the idea of having a restaurant in a greenhouse, growing my own things, uh, doing the things I like uh, very much. Uh, in August 2000 we started building. We opened January 2001 and from uh, day one on it was fully, fully booked. We have about 45,000 guests a year and that's for three years already. And we try to grow all our vegetables and all our herbs ourselves. Together with a few farmers we managed to make, uh, let's say from April until December, all our vegetables and herbs ourselves. Our menu always consists of three small appetizers, a main course and a dessert. You get it all for a, a very reasonable price. We harvest every morning. I bring it to the chef. The chef is starting to cook and next day he's starting all over again. Okay, what we have here is one of our greenhouses. This is what we have. We also have a large piece of land uh, outside Amsterdam. I hope to show it to you later. What we grow here is, and I don't cook anymore as you see, I grow now together with my friend uh, Walter, who inspired me a lot. We grow uh, all kinds of Mediterranean herbs and vegetables inside. Uh, but also uh, geranium, inspired by the Japanese uh, dessert book from California. Still a great inspiration uh, to us. 
uh, basil, geranium, peppers, uh, 15 varieties of heirloom tomatoes, very old fashioned, very tasty, all kind of different shapes and, uh, and tastes, very nice. We have fresh bay leaf, uh, we have uh, fresh um, uh, lemon thyme, lemon verbena, uh, Maya lemons from uh, California as well. So uh, I have to say we find a lot of inspiration here in Holland uh, in our greenhouse history, but also we import a lot from your ideas of having restaurants in, uh, in your country. Okay, well, what you see here is our herb garden. We use it, uh, but also the people who live around uh, the park uh, use it as well. They pick our strawberries, which we don't like, or uh, some, some fresh herbs. And uh, what, what a nice thing is that uh, when you visit uh, the Kas for the first time, you think it's somewhere uh, in the country, but it's in the middle of Amsterdam, actually. And it gives you a kind of uh, Central Park uh, feeling. I don't know why, but uh, something like that. We have a little potato, we have some sage, we have everything. We have our cooks uh, resting uh, from uh, hard working uh, for lunch. Uh, also funny is that we have a nice, uh, if you look over there, we have a nice uh, couple of uh, storks with uh, young uh, baby storks. We have a lot of offices over here uh, all around. But it's, it's still as in you're in the middle of, uh, of the country and that's what I like uh, very much uh, uh, from the Kas. We're out here about 15 minutes from Amsterdam. We're going to visit with Walter. He's part of the production team for the fresh vegetables that Restaurant and Kekerai de Cache serves. Sweet berries to succulent vegetables. What a place of gorgeous beauty and lush farmland. Let's go see. My name is Walter Abma. I'm the grower of restaurant De Kas in Amsterdam, and I like to show you our uh, uh, our fields, our garden. Glad to meet you. Yes. Are we ready to go get a little tour here? Feel welcome to follow me. Wow, this is so nice. The garden is a little north of Amsterdam. Uh, 15 minutes and we try to grow as much as possible our own vegetables, herbs, fruits. Well, once I started uh, tropical agriculture, uh, but then I worked for about 15 years in a restaurant, wholesale store, and uh, Gert-Jan Hageman, uh, the owner of the Kas, was one of my clients, and about eight years ago uh, he visited me. I had my garden here and uh, that's where the idea of Restaurant de Kast started. He liked to have a restaurant in a greenhouse and I thought uh, uh, I should be part of it. These plastic tunnel greenhouses, uh, this year we have about 12 or 13 breeds of tomatoes. We call it Cardoon. In Italy they call it Cardi. This is the ancestor of artichoke. This is a special breed of strawberries. It's from France. It's called Mara de Bois. And they have uh, a little bit the taste uh, of uh, wild strawberries. This is uh, from Italy um, Radicchio Rosso di Trevise. Uh, this is for in winter time. 
it's like uh, a little bit like uh, like chicory but dark red. Here we have growing red beetroot, and this is uh, a pak choy uh, variety. Uh, I think you call it bok choy. So if I harvest, I leave the bad leaves here, and these leaves will be for the restaurants. There are some leeks, young fennel. It can be harvested, I think, uh, well, about 10 days. We like it young. Purple flowers means also purple pods, and it's a typical Dutch variety. We call it blauw schokker. Wow, this is a purple podded pea, yep. and this one's a little bit ripe, right? This, is, uh, this one is all right. Now. Big one, yeah. let's see. Wow, look at that. You got bright green peas in a purple pod. Here we grow a little sugini. Um, we use the fruit, but also we use the flowers. And what is funny, uh, a zucchini plant has male flowers. And this is the female flower. And it forms the zucchini. This is our uh, compost pile. And it's uh, leftover plants, which we can use next year in the greenhouses. This place is completely organic and it's so lush and green, you can just feel how happy these plants are. For us, freshness of vegetables is the most important thing. Um, at night, uh, the chef calls me what he likes me to harvest the next morning. What I harvest the next morning will be eaten the same day. Okay, bye bye. I thank you for your visit. Hopefully you come next year again. Bye bye. Hello, welcome in restaurant De Cas. I am Martijn Kijuiter and I'm the head chef of this restaurant. I would like to show you uh, one of our favorite recipes with beetroot and I'm going to prepare it to you in a little steps. One of the magical things of working in a restaurant in a greenhouse is that we can pull any vegetable out of the ground at will. So today for the beetroot, I pull out the beetroots. Okay, we take the beets. Uh, we're just gonna uh, remove most of the, the mud and then we're gonna cook it in, in our own skin. We just cut the stalks off a little bit off, uh, off the back of the, of the beetroot because if you just cut it like this, it will bleed. It will bleed, uh, it, all the juice will drain out into the water. And that's what we don't want. We want to keep all the juice inside and uh, keep the most flavor in it. So just we keep it closed and we cook it in water and then it's perfect. The whole beets, just add them in water and I cook them for about 30 minutes. So you can, if you put, can put a knife in it and it goes easily, it's cooked. No problem. Now we're going to remove the skin. You just can, can use the, the, the thumb and you just rub over it and the peel will loosen it by itself. But if there is at any point a part, you can can't get loose, just use a knife. That's no problem. That's nature, it's always different. We 
these are very fresh beets, just like that. This is lemon blossom and we're going to chop it up for, uh, for adding to the, the beetroot tarts. Now we chop the lemon thyme. We don't chop it too finely to keep some more structure in it. It gives uh, a lot of flavor and intensity of flavor is more when you keep more structure in it. If you cut it too fine, it will loosen his flavor too, too soon because it, uh, the little tarts will go into the oven for about 20 minutes. So in 20 minutes time, it will cook and it will release its flour. With some olive oil, you sprinkle some of the lemon thyme on it, some coarse sea salt, and some black pepper. We cut it open, we put it down like this. All right, for the, for the beetroot top, we need beetroots, fresh beetroots, of course, some lemon thyme, some olive oil, of course, sea salt, some black pepper, some puff paste. We make, we make it ourselves, but you can buy it in any shop, deep frozen and just, uh, just normal package. And it's just pastry dough. Now we pop it into the oven approximately for about 20 minutes, just until the, the pastry is uh, crisp and golden brown. Here we have the, the garnish, it's a herb salad of, uh, of some herbs that are a greenhouse and some blossom. We have nasturtium, we have tong ho, and we have some sage blossom. We just pull it out of the garden, just keep it whole. You don't have to wash this because there's no sand in it. Just, it's just like, just clean like this. And it's a pity, if, if you wash it in water, it will uh, wash away most of the flavors and it will bruise very quickly, so. Just add it like this. To finish everything off, we, we made two different sauces to uh, the beetroot tarts. We have here, we have some horseradish uh, with cream and lemon. And here we have the juice of the beetroot. Reduce it down and we just put some olive oil through it so you have a nice emulsion. Okay, now we're going to season the salad. It has a lot of flavor of itself. It has sweetness, bitterness, uh, flourness. It's all different flavors, so we keep it very plain. We just add a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt. Pepper is not necessary. It's in all the herbs, so there's enough flavor in it. All right, they're finished. You see? They're golden brown, they're crisp, they're just fine. To dress the plate, you just drizzle some, uh, some of the horseradish cream on the plate. With a bit of the beetroot oil. Then we add beetroot tots. We have the herb salad with the blossom. Eet smakelijk, like we say in Dutch. Coming soon on the Hippie Gourmet, we go to Amsterdam, The Hague, and Italy.
Hippie Gourmet is the ruler of my known universe. Yeah, it is. Peace, mate. <laughs>